we as a society, we act like this girl's behavior is just an isolated incident. No. This is just one particular person who, whose behavior came to the surface for us to witness. Okay? I hit him one time and I remember that leg being so much. I do, but I don't rem when I watch it back, I don't remember it being like that. I don't remember that leg being so much. I, and it's like, I feel like I hit him one time and I watch him like hitting him like multiple times. Uh-huh, multiple times. Amber also admitted to being out of it during her violent verbal outburst. And like I say, we know that some of the violent episodes were caught by MTV cameras. In fact, the baby has been in the room during at least one of them. We've seen that. I think if a baby were ever in harm's way, that MTV should have jumped in, should have intervened. Maria, do you agree? You know, I think that if they're in a difficult position, but they should have at least taken the child out of the room, I think. I mean, I am absolutely horrified. I have chills all the way down my body. I'm no, what they probably did is they probably trusted the woman's judgment. Well, the woman, she is in charge of the situation, and, and she's the mother. She has the final say, and, well, if the situation was bad, then I'm sure she would have taken the kid out of the room, and so it didn't witness this stuff, and mur, 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 because women are the authority on stuff, and women, you know, we just got to trust their guidance. I am absolutely horrified. I have chills all the way down my body. I'm sick to my stomach watching this. This girl is only upset because she got caught and she's exactly. now seeing the ramifications of this and she's being investigated. Gary, exactly. call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well, that will not abuse you. It is absolutely not a position you need to be in. And it's... Are, are you sure? Are, are, like, like, okay, prove to me. Prove to me that there's a good girl who's going to go for a good guy. I mean, like... I mean, no. No, they're, they're not going to go for him because they don't think he's attractive. And, you know, or, or maybe he don't got as much money as they want. No. I, I, see, once again, here's this shit I keep talking about. Yes, I agree that good people should get with good people, but, like, will it actually happen? I mean, sometimes it does. But, like, I mean, does it happen as much as it should? Or, has happen, or does it happen as much as people would like to see it happen? No, it doesn't. Um. Now I, I want you to hear this here because it's very important. Treat you well that will not abuse you. It, she's now seeing the ramifications of this, and she's being investigated. Gary, call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well. That C call her like for, she wants Gary to call. You know Gary Shirley, the victim of Amber Portwood's domestic violence. You know she wants him to call her. You know, the person on the show. For what reason? Like, to get with her? Whatever. Or maybe she's going to hook, have pity on him and hook him up with somebody. My stomach watching this. This girl yeah. is only upset because she got caught and she's now seeing the ramifications of this and she's being investigated. Gary, call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well, that will not abuse you. It is absolutely not a position you need to be in. And it's sad because he's taking it and it's absolutely horrific. I mean, this child needs to... Of course, of course he's accepting the violence that is displayed upon him. Does he have any other recourse? Oh. He, he knows that he cannot defend himself. He knows that, like, he's basically trapped. That he, like... And if he claims that he's a victim, then he will be... Uh, regarded as less than a man because he can't defend himself or that he'll be like somehow invalidated because he'll be perceived as a wuss or whatever and then if he fights back and defends himself and upholds equality then he'll be labeled as a violent person too be safe and this girl it's call me there are girls out there that will treat you well that will not abuse you it is absolutely not a position you need to be in <laughs> and it's sad because he's taking it and it's absolutely gotta horrific. Hear that again. my stomach watching this this girl is only upset because she got caught that's and true she's now seeing the ramifications of this and she's being investigated Gary, that's true 
call me. There are girls out there that will treat you well, that will not abuse I doubt you. It, it is I doubt absolutely it. not a position you need to be in. And it's sad because he's, he's taking it, and it's he absolutely horrific. I mean, this child needs to be safe. And this girl, yeah. at some point... Yeah. Alright, now I gotta check out, um... I gotta see this one. A cautionary tale now about the reality TV star who is now in prison. Amber Portwood of MTV's Teen Mom began serving a five-year sentence this week for using illegal drugs. It's the latest in a serious string of setbacks, and she explained why she chose to go to jail in this exclusive interview with ABC's Juju Chang. So she's violent and abusive and neglects, you know, the, the best interests of the child and all that. Gets reunited with her child, uses drugs, all this other kind of shit. I mean, she's just a fucking waste of life. I mean, like, honestly. And I say that because that's how a guy would be regarded if he did the same thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but, but these are the people who are raising kids now. You know what I'm saying? And, like... And, and there's no bias against all these young mothers and all that, you know, in the courts or whatever. No, they're just, and the state just keeps on giving the fucking food stamps and the fucking welfare and, like, and just automatic default custody and regardless of, like, well, you'll see why she gets reunited with the kid, but anyway... You'll see how shitty, you know, a girl can be and the, and the state still gives the kid back to the, the shitty mother and all this other shit where it's like... And there's there's got, there are men who try to fight to, to be a part of their kid's life and they have to fucking run the gauntlet and, and like, fucking prove themselves. You know, it's like I had to fucking fight in court just to have, like, visitation with my kid. Because my former girlfriend just ran off with the kid. I didn't even know where she was at. Didn't see my kid for weeks. I mean, I went a good, uh, I went a good six weeks all total without even knowing where he was at or what condition my kid was in. You know? And she did this to me. Now, I happened to record a, a phone conversation to where... You know, she didn't want that same thing to happen to her. I mean, she was wanting to move out of the area. And I told her, it's like she's got to follow protocol just like she, you know, just like I would have to follow, you know, in terms of change of address and all that. And, you know, she violates the, uh, and, I, and, you know, I was saying in this phone conversation with her, I said that I was telling her that if she violates the custody agreement and all that, then, then she could possibly lose the child. You know what I'm saying? And she started crying and, and all this other kind of stuff and saying that it would kill her if she were to be without her child. So I asked her in the phone conversation, I need to put this up here somewhere, and I asked her in the phone conversation, it's like, well, well how do you expect me to feel? When I went six weeks all total without seeing the kid or knowing what condition he was in or whatever, I mean, how do you think it made me feel? And... Why I, I couldn't even get in contact with her to send her child support money for the benefit of my kid because she'd move around and not tell me where she was at and all this other shit. My lawyer, he, I mean, you know, he he did put, he put the brakes on that kind of stuff when he he wrote that letter to the court and all that and said that the mother was concealing the whereabouts of the child from the father and uh, that's why that's why uh, the judge, the female judge, says said to my former girlfriend said now now whenever you move you got to let him know 90 days in advance you know uh and 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 then you're responsible for keeping airtime on your phone so he can contact you and and you're responsible to make sure you have minutes on your phone uh in case he needs to contact you about the child and and the judge used that in a certain tone of voice now now you need to do this okay Use that tone of voice toward my former girlfriend. And it was just so awesome. I'm like, damn. And then I read the letter that the judge sent to the court. And it's like, damn, no wonder the judge treated her that way. You know, a female judge treated her that way. But, like, 
Hmm. So anyway, yep. And um, anyway, um, yeah, my former girlfriend ran off with the kid, then got him sick. Uh, I, I couldn't even find out where she was. Her and her mom were both not responding. They, they either didn't have airtime on their phone or they weren't responding to my calls. So I couldn't even find out where they are in order to get child support money to my former girlfriend to, to help my kid. In order to, you know, I couldn't even get money because I didn't, okay, because my former girlfriend ran off with a kid and didn't tell me where she was or whatever, I couldn't even get money, I couldn't even get child support money to my former girlfriend to help my kid, and I couldn't get money, I couldn't get, also at the same time, I couldn't get money to my former girlfriend so that she can buy air phone or air time for her, for her phone so that I can call her and find out where she is so I can get money to her. I mean, it just, it's so fucking stupid. She, she ran from shelter to shelter and all that. Um, and, I mean, she just, I'm not saying that she neglects the child all the time, but she does it way too often. Um, walking them around in the cold and all that and it's like I'm like the shelter doesn't have a vehicle you can't get a ride from somebody it's like you know to take them down to wherever and it's like cause she'd walk from like every different place and all that sort of thing and it just I, I, we felt sorry for the kid I mean I, I felt bad for him and all that he was sick like the whole time he, he's been in her, her physical custody for um, 11 months and out of that 11 months he's been well for about um, probably uh, two months I'd say you know a two, mo two months worth of time he's been well like not sick or whatever and you know and then uh, you know and he developed allergies all of a sudden well because like her mom and everybody was smoking around him they wouldn't even have the, the decency to not smoke around a kid. You know, a kid that was like less than a year old. This fucking entitlement attitude to satisfy somebody's urges to smoke a cigarette and all that. They couldn't even have a fucking conscience and step outside and smoke. You know, spend five or ten minutes smoking a cigarette outside. No, they just smoke it in the same room with a kid. It's, it's fucking pathetic. All this shit. I get so fucking pissed at what my kid has to go through because of the mom's decisions. And just and I, I didn't even necessarily want to be a father. You know, I thought all I was saying yes to was the first date. And five weeks after the first date, then we're already living together. It wasn't even my idea to live together. She got put in this apartment and had all these other ploys and shit to keep me with her and got me all caught up in her fucking family drama and all kind of other stupid shit. <sighs> Found a way for me to get her pregnant while having me believe that she was incapable of getting pregnant and all this other stuff. I found a bunch of stuff out in retrospect. Just, you know, just too many women out there saying that they're on the pill. Tell them, tell them the guys that, you know, uh, about, you know, being on the pill and all that and that they're incapable of getting pregnant. They find a way to turn so many men into unwilling sperm donors. And it is a form of sexual assault. Because that's what it's called whenever a man forces parenthood onto a woman. You know, so is it wrong or is it not? Well, I agree that it's wrong, but apparently it's only treated as wrong as if it happens to a female. What does that say about females? It says that they're weak and pathetic and can't take care of themselves and need all kind of extra special treatment and perks and safety nets and all kind of other shit that, like, fucking cater to their pathetic dumb asses. I mean, I originally did not believe what I am just now saying. 
I mean, a decade ago, if I would have heard myself talking right now, I'd probably be really pissed off. But my bubble got popped. I found out what women are capable of and what women are willing to do. And I gotta finish this video because it's been several hours already. It's been three years since we watched Amber Portwood experience the epic highs it's a girl. and a of being validated. Debilitating lows of teen motherhood. I want that! Get out! But now, the 22 year old reality star of two monster hits for MTV, 16 and pregnant, and teen mom, is facing a new reality prison. This week, Port would quit her court ordered rehab, instead, choosing to serve a five year prison sentence for an illegal prescription drug. Yeah, rot in jail, you bitch. You earned it to serve a five-year prison sentence for an illegal prescription drug charge. I felt like I'd rather do my time and get it over with and make the best out of the situation mm -hmm. that's been handed to me. And mm -hmm. in a jailhouse interview, Amber tells ABC News exclusively she felt she was creating a prison within her own mind. I was very depressed. I was alone. I was bitter at everybody. You're depressed because you were alone? Well, you know, I actually, like feel like being alone is like a sanctuary you know what I'm saying because most women are actually like you okay Amber most women are now like you you are so typical most women you are typical of women okay Amber Portwood you are typical of your gender combined with your age and how old does a person have to be before they don't act like Amber Portwood anymore? I see 40 and 50 year olds still acting that way. Okay? So, it is women and in their inherent psychology. Or inherent, you know, um, um, characteristics of their psychology. I was alone. I was bitter at everybody. And I didn't feel like that was the life that I wanted to live. I and she like very nearly life. ended it. In a startling confession, she says she tried to OD on pills. I had taken 30 Suboxone within about three days. You know, the depression took over, and I just take four or five at a time underneath my tongue. It's not the first time. So, so like, what reason do you have to kill yourself? I mean, you got a vagina. You got the world, like as your oyster. I mean, you didn't get any fucking rape allegations, did you? You didn't get any sexual harassment allegations, did you? I mean, me and the disposable human doing, we got accused of some shit, and we actually wanted to put a gun in our mouths and eat a bullet. Well, he didn't load up his gun and all that, but he thought of it. He felt that bad, and I know what it's like because I actually loaded up my pistol uh, fully loaded, fully loaded magazine, one in the chamber, 45 caliber, uh, and looked like right straight down the barrel, all safeties off, gently squeezing the trigger. As I weighed the value of my life, um, and, and, you know, and was leaning toward the belief that I need to end my life in order to maintain the comfort of the female gender so they would never ever have to feel bothered again just because somebody implied that I was guilty of sexual harassment for, for two reasons. One is because I asked a woman out on a date twice and that happened because she didn't say anything the first time. Okay, she didn't give me an answer and I, don't, and I didn't know what silence meant because I never used it. Um, and the other was because I had inadvertently stepped onto a invisible relationship and became part of a intern or a, a invisible love triangle, uh, in which one of the members in the triangle basically won out by, you know, claiming victimhood for the other person and then, you know, and then portraying me as, as creating some vicious rumor about you know, the lesbian relationship and all that, which I didn't even know existed. Uh, somebody else had actually brought it up and mentioned it because they found out about it before I did, but yet I become the fall guy for this shit so, so a couple people can maintain some dignity 
or well, or maintain self-esteem and feel dignified and all this other shit. So I had to get all depressed and hate myself and actually want to die and load up a pistol and point it at my face and gently squeeze the trigger, not enough to set it off, but enough to feel the texture and the trigger and 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 understand the full weight of what was going on. And all this happened so a few females don't have to feel bad. So Amber Portwood, what reason did you have to uh, to uh, to kill yourself, huh? Did did you do something wrong, like abuse a guy on TV and get caught and have to face consequences for your actions of being a violent piece of shit? Hey. Four or five at a time, I raised my tongue. It's not the first time Portwood has talked about suicide. Because so she's having a hard time with her life. Yeah, call the police because they're going to find Having a hard time with her life. L like, why? She is only a victim of her own behavior. You know what I'm saying? She's the one that's all violent like this and going around and hitting people. Sounds like she deserves to, like, have correction and needs to be in jail or whatever and have to deal with the consequences of her behavior like a man is expected to do it. You need to fucking woman up, you dumbass. My body in the garage. Last year, she was rushed to the hospital after her boyfriend, Gary Shirley, called 911. I'm calling you guys because I don't want her to kill herself. It was Portwood's explosive relation... Oh, so, so Gary Shirley, the baby daddy, has concern for the health and well-being of the woman who abused him. Yeah, I mean, it happens, but, you know, will he actually really be recognized for his, for his compassion? We'll see. Gary Shirley called 911. I'm calling you guys because I don't want her to kill herself. It was Portwood's explosive relationship with Shirley that got her in trouble in the first place. <laughs> After this episode of Teen Mom a year ago, she was arrested and pled guilty to domestic violence charges. She lost custody of her daughter, Leah. Her Only life, temporary. A public spectacle. But experts say the decision to forego treatment is just another in a series of bad choices. I don't think she really realizes how severe a penalty she's choosing when in fact she could have worked outpatient in a drug program. For now, Portwood's daughter will stay with the baby's father. We'll still have a relationship, and we, we, we still do. Portwood is hoping jail time will finally provide a fresh start. Hmm. I'm not just going to sit. I'm going to do substance abuse classes. I'm going to get my GED. And perhaps a chance for this team mom. She's going to get her GED on the fucking taxpayer's dime. She's going to make the most of her experience. Fucking gold digger. To grow up for good. Love you. For Good Morning America, Juju Chang, ABC News, New York. Alright, now I gotta see something else. A couple more videos I gotta show. Oh, yeah, here it is. Alright, now you've seen all the violent shit that Amber Portwood was doing to Gary Shirley, um, you know, her boyfriend and father of her child. Now, what, uh, now I believe this 911 call happened basically at the same time, you know, a few minutes after or half an hour after the events, but shortly after her uh, violent outburst, in which she beat the crap out of her boyfriend. She calls nine. If this is the same video, then it's the one where she calls nine one one and pretends to be the victim of his violence. So you get to see how women are and how they fucking flip flop and play the victim in order to defend themselves and all kind of other shit and exploit people's gullibility and 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 exploit people's compassion for the vagina and they they play that role of helpless victim, someone who is therefore deserving of special care and protection and all that because she wants to be an inherently valuable object. Why? Because she has a vagina. So, so listen to this. <clears throat> Amber, Hi, my name's Amber Portland. I'm at 
and my ex just threw all my stuff everywhere and cussed me out and ran up on me like he really hit me and then hit my car. Is he there now? I can't breathe right now. Is he there now? Yeah. What's his name? His name is Gary Shirley and he just got out of jail tonight. Oh, I guess he didn't get a jail. What's your name? My name's Amber Portland. Oh, Amber Portland. Do you want to be a big girl? Do you want to be a big girl? Good. 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 Good, Barry. Good. Because you're going to prison for being abusive. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And I'm in the garage, and he closes the one, he's in the house, but I have all my stuff everywhere, all over the floor, in the garage. He picked up my stuff and just threw it. And I did nothing at all to him. Huh. I did nothing at all to him, even though she beat the shit out of him on TV. And notice how she plays the victim. And Good, Gary, good. You're going to jail because you were abusive toward me. And meh, meh, meh. She tries to turn the situation around and, you know, and act like the reason why, you know, it's, just, it's a fucking cover story, you know. It's a bunch of cover your ass type of bullshit. And, like... She got caught and all that, but, like, you know, on camera. But she doesn't have consequences, so what does she do? She tries to do damage control right now. She's calling up the police um, and trying to do the whole stereotypical, work the whole stereotypical angle of the violent, abusive man. He just got out from prison, and he's, he's oh, he's, oh, I'm a victim of his rage, and And all this other shit. But that's not consistent with how she was acting on camera. Hold on a second. And then you hit my car. <laughs> and he's a very decent person. <laughs> so what this really is, Amber, is that this is the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, because we have no evidence of his abuse, yet we have at least two different incidents where you were violent and physically abusive to him on camera, and at least in one of those incidents, you were violently abusive toward him on camera in the view of your child. Okay? And, uh, so, uh, so, there, there it is. I mean, Amber Portwood will do anything. Look, and she's so typical of her gender. They will do anything to, to, like, oh my gosh, they're so fucking pathetic. Why does society keep trusting these people? And look at how sweetly innocent she looks, posing for the camera. And underneath this mask of painted up beauty is a fucking raging lunatic monster underneath and i know i i know she'll she'll claim that she was abused as a child and then that that's her whole defense you know and it's, well i was abused as a child and well it's just you know it just made me the way i am and so so please excuse me i mean it's just meh, meh, meh. no no I, like you know what that shit like doesn't work when men do it why should it work when your gender does it? You know what I'm saying? Where's the equality, you dipshit? Violent people should be dealt with the way violent people should be dealt with. Violence is wrong, and I agree it's wrong. Nobody should be using violence against anybody, okay? But you, Amber Portwood, expected to get away with your violence. So if Gary, if Gary Shirley would have threw a punch at you and clocked you a good one, I would have been in support of that. Why? 
because you provoked it. All he would have been doing is defending himself, and he didn't even do that. He let you display your violence and your rage uninterrupted for all of us to see, because you're a piece of shit, Amber Portwood. You're pathetic. You deserve exactly as much mercy as you would have had for him if the situation were reversed, which you wouldn't have had much mercy, so that's why you don't deserve much mercy. Now let's continue on. So what you're doing, Amber, is you're telling the dispatchers and the, the, the police and and all of them, you're telling them what they are expecting to hear, and you're pretending to be all innocent and all this other stuff. You are making sure that that mask you wear is fully polished and credible. And he's a very decent person, so I'm just going to say that right And he's a very decent Okay, it's the end of that. One more Amber Portwood video. Oh, Amber Portwood. That's not what I want to see. Um, it's a different one. Oops, crap. This is how most people know Amber Portwood. I wish I was bigger than you. Viciously attacking Gary Shirley, the father of her young daughter, three-year-old Leah, in front of cameras on the MTV reality show Teen Mom. I am at the edge. Do you want to get punched in your face? You want to <laughs> now, Amber Portwood's roller coaster ride of reality TV fame, drug problems, and multiple arrests has reached a tragic conclusion. Troubled teen mom Amber Portwood has been sentenced to five years in jail. Today, a Madison County, Indiana judge ordered her to complete the five-year prison sentence she got for a December arrest for drug possession. A prosecutor tells Showbiz Tonight Amber had violated her probation by failing a urine test and then lying about it. As a result, she's expected to be locked up for half of that five-year sentence <laughs> before Only half. being released on parole. This is heartbreaking that Amber has had to go this route. Radar's Alexis Terezchuk tells Showbiz Tonight the one thing... Why? I mean, society don't have sympathy on a man, you know, when a man goes through it. They just talk about how much damage he did to society. More shocking than Amber's long sentence is that she asked for it saying she couldn't handle the court-ordered rehab. She just has not been able to stay clean. And this maybe is the only way that she's finally going to get some help. From reality TV and tabloid fame to prison, Showbiz Tonight has the latest on this teen mom tragedy. It has been nothing but trouble for her ever since she got on the show. Amber and Gary were one of the couples featured on MTV's reality show, Teen Mom. You were makeup on, you come to mommy. Debuting in 2009, it shows young moms like Amber dealing with the pressures of raising a child. Somebody has to be an adult. But on more than one occasion for Amber and Gary, the pressures boiled over into violence. Don't you ever f come here again, you fat piece of 
In a disturbing 2010 episode, Amber was seen viciously and repeatedly beating and kicking Gary. You're trash! And in another incident, we actually saw Amber choking and assaulting Gary in front of her family, including their then one-year-old daughter. Let me tell you something. You don't talk to my damn dad like that. You hear me? You apologize to him! The scenes were so vicious, they caught the attention of local prosecutors. Following this incident, Amber was charged with domestic battery. She worked out a plea deal. More troubles followed. Drug problems, a reported suicide attempt, and Amber lost custody of her little daughter. Being so famous so quickly has definitely caused problems for Amber. Amber is not the only teen mom to have troubles. Do you know I can punch you in your face right now? Janelle Evans also has been a tabloid fixture for drug problems and multiple arrests. As a result, MTV has been slammed repeatedly for taking troubled teens like Evans and Portwood and making them TV stars and gossip fodder. The critics and viewers are so... No, what MTV really did is just showed a sample of how young women are these days and how they're undateable and all they'll do is sexually exploit a man to get a child a fucking meal ticket for the rest of their life and all kind of other shit and then fucking play the victim and fucking beat the shit out of the dude and claim he's an asshole and then try to get everybody to hate him and then just go down a spiraling downward just it's just pathetic it just it just shows inherent toxicity no oh, anti-teen mom. They say that it glamorizes teen pregnancy, that it shows these girls at their worst, that teen pregnancy rates have actually dropped. So while these few girls... Good! Yeah, teen pregnancy dropping, that's actually good. Pregnancy, ...that it shows these girls at their worst, that teen pregnancy rates have actually dropped. So while these few girls seem to have absolutely terrible lives that are caught on camera across the nation, maybe it is sinking into young people that being a teen mom is not the way to go. Whether teen mom... Yeah, your kid is a responsibility. It's not a fucking fashion accessory, and you shouldn't use it as a human shield or a meal ticket. Yeah, women, you need to have a conscience out there. But you're not showing very much of one, okay? Teen Mom is not the way to go. Whether Teen Mom, now in its final season, is actually having a good effect on teen pregnancy is anybody's guess. But one thing is clear, it's hard to see how it helped Amber. She is not going to be a mother to her daughter. She's going to be in jail. She's leaving everything behind. It's really tragic. She chose that life. I mean, she didn't have to hit the dude, you know what I'm saying? I mean, damn. She didn't have to be violent. Oh, here, here's the one I wanted to see. Oh, hello. What's this elegant machine caressing my milk chocolate skin? It's the best damn razor you've ever seen. That's what. It's the Braun Electric Razor. And this is where we put them to the test. What do you need to test a razor? BraunTestLabs.com Teen mom Amber Portwood is out of jail and reunited with her daughter. A Madison County judge yesterday ordered Portwood to stay away from her child's father, though, Gary Shirley. It was this episode of MTV's Teen Mom showing Portwood hitting, slapping, and kicking Shirley that got her arrested. Her attorney appeared exclusively on CBS's The Early Show this morning. She is a person who is completely able to take responsibility for her actions and no. care for her daughter. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people probably believe, Amber is a very nice person, <laughs> a very responsible person, and a very honest person. Portwood will be back in court next month. No, it's not what we've seen on camera, you know? I mean, yeah, he, he's just doing public relations for her, you know, because he's her lawyer. And no, I mean, she's a violent fucking sa psychopath. ...and care for her daughter. Uh, contrary... She is a person who is completely able to take responsibility for her actions and care for her daughter. Uh, no, she's not going to take good care of her daughter. She fucking like violently abused the baby's daddy in front of the in front of the baby. I mean, th that's not very good parenting. Hey, but guess what? She gets her kid back in the end, right? Of course she does, because she's got a vagina. Contrary to what a lot of people probably believe, Amber is a very nice person. Contrary to what you may have seen on TV, you know, like, no, believe me, she's not like that. Meh. Person, a very responsible person and a very honest person. Portwood will be... Oh, very honest, 
person. Oh, so so why did she lie on her drug test, huh? Why did she lie about various other things? Why did she lie to the police about who got abused that one, uh, you know, that one day, uh, you know, uh, during that MTV video shoot, huh? Yeah, exactly. Amber Portwood is pathetic and not trustworthy. And she's people like Amber Portwood are becoming very much more common. Back in court next month. Okay, now there was one. It's like. It's one, it's like. There's this one video that me and the disposable human doing, um, we were watching, and everybody was talking about, well, I feel sorry for, for, you know, I feel sorry for Amber. She's having to go down this whole, you know, this whole tragic events in her life, and I feel sorry for that baby, and, and, you know, having to witness all this and all this sort of stuff, but, you know, what I want to point out is that who cared about Gary, Gary Shirley? I mean, he was the one... Oh, okay, I've seen that one woman say, Gary, there's good girls out there that'll treat you right and all that. But really, you know, it, it's uh, they feel sorry. You know, you know, I mean, there's sympathy for Amber, who was the violent abuser. And then there's sympathy for Leah, which is the, you know, child that witnessed the abuse. But then where's the sympathy? Where's the outpouring of sympathy for the person who was the direct victim of the violence? Oh, that's right, he's a man, so it don't matter, right? Um, Yeah, I'm done with the same report wood stuff for now. I gotta find that video that's uh that's uh you know about uh the Amber Portwood. But see, the last video I'm gonna end this with, because it's been like gosh, it's been over three hours, I know. This video is well over three hours, I'm pretty sure. Um but um the last video that I want to show of this to the Fometheus is uh, this one right here, and this this video is dated from early September of 2012. I noticed it on September 4th, 2012, and I did an analysis on it. Um, but you know, like the Fometheus is stereotyping men is just. Rape, rapists and violent abusers and all this other shit and you know and um and jerks and um and that sort of thing and I, so I point out all these scenarios where women are are every bit as bad as what they portray men to be and yet society doesn't have this systematic distrust for the female gender that they have for the male gender. Um, so I want to show this video because this is solid platinum of how a woman can and therefore will invent a false rape allegation. Um, this is not to say that all rape claims are false. There are times when women get raped, but my point is, there are some false claims out there, there are some false rape allegations, um, and um, and there are times when women uh, invent rape allegations for sympathy purposes, <laughs> to gain sympathy or to wield power or to extort men or whatever and and in light of this video I expect the legal system to handle rape cases differently than what the feminist um, would prefer uh, we we have to examine 
rape allegations differently now once you see this video. Um, now the backstory on this is this guy was staying at a bed and breakfast. Um, the landlady, her name is Kathy Tretola. It's T-R-E-T-O-L-A and she runs a bed and breakfast. Um, Brookside Manor. All right, Brookside Manor, founded by Joseph Tritola in 1971, uh, owned and operated by his daughter Kathy Tritola. <laughs> integrity of establishment cleanliness blah 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 mm -hmm. and here's the place where this whole incident took place I'm assuming it's up here in this room um, because there are stairs that, there's some stairs here, right here somewhere, and this guy has some windows, which you'll see here. Why are you videotaping me right now? Me? Why are you hitting me, lady? No, you're touching me. Why are you hitting me, lady? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. What the fuck you doing? You me? What are you doing? I'm not you touching you. Me? Stop oh, hitting me, lady. Help me. Stop help hitting me, help lady. Me, help me. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Oh, help me. Oh my! Wonder if those are the windows. Yeah, that is pretty narrow there. Looks like it occurred in this room because you'll see the orientation of all this uh, in the video. And security, except uh, not from a rape allegation. Mm-hmm. Here's her. Uh, here's her. Uh, address here, email address. There's her name, there's phone number, fax, a lot of other great stuff, business phone, fax. Um, for a week, okay. Wi-Fi access, Wi-Fi access because this dude was using a computer. Now some background on this video. Uh, I don't know what this guy did, but whatever he did does not justify a false rape allegation. Um, me and the disposable human doing, we were debating whether he didn't pay his bill or whether he stole a towel or whether he, you know, took some silverware or, you know, I'm trying to wonder, I'm trying to figure out what he would do that, or what he even possibly could have done to prompt the reaction from this woman who owns and operates the business I'm just trying to figure out what he could have done to deserve what she does okay um two guys come in with her a guy in the white shirt and a guy in the green hat they were in there the whole time they came into uh, this room and they intimidate this guy uh, this woman, Kathy Tertola, was beating the shit out of this guy who's recording with a camera. He gets smart and decides to record it with his camera for his own defense. Uh, well, she sees the camera, but she thinks it just records audio. She doesn't understand that it's a camera. She, I guess, based on her, her actions her and her reaction to it, she believes that it is a, um, you can see by her actions, she believes that it is just a tape recorder. 
or an audio only device. Um, and she goes from punching the shit out of him uh, to instantly accusing him of trying to rape her. And it's totally bullshit because these two guys are trying to just, you know, get her out of the room. And the guy, you know, with the camera is just standing on his bed. You can see by the elevation and the angle. He's trying to get away from this woman and get away from these people. They all keep intimidating him and all that. She claims rape. Uh, she keeps... She's pretending that he's trying to rape her, but yet she does every oppor she she wastes every opportunity to get away from him. Uh, in one instance, um, she is less than an arm's length away from a door that is wide open, going out to the hallway, and you can tell the door is wide open because of its position, and there's light coming out of it. And she's sitting on the bed right next to the door, clearly has an opportunity to leave. And she says, you're trying, you know, I'm trying to leave, but you won't let me. You're trying to rape me. And all this other shit you can see. And I'm going to play this video a couple times to see how how obvious her behavior is. And so the Femetheus, because I want, I want the Femetheus to answer this, okay? Uh, Dr. Claw, uh, you got some serious explaining to do. You act like women are victims of rape all the time. Well, what about this... This video clip here that I'm going to show you where this woman makes a false rape allegation and is caught on camera. Okay? Where it is obvious that nobody is trying to rape her. She is not in any danger whatsoever. The, the, um, the alleged rapist is actually trying to get her away from him. Uh, she's violent toward him and then tries to use these guys to intimidate him and yet the whole time she's putting on this show uh, as she's pretending to be the victim of him. Why are you videotaping me right now? Me. Why are you hitting me, lady? No, you're touching me. Why are you hitting me, lady? Don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Yeah, what the fuck you doing? You rape me. What are you doing? I am not touching you. Me. Stop oh, hitting me, lady. Stop help hitting me, me lady! Help me! Oh, help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Oh, oh help me! Oh my! Oh. Lady, you're scaring me. Oh, I know you're scaring me. You're scaring me too, sir. Get away from me! Get away from me! You're scaring me! Now you can see over here, this guy is being used. Uh, uh, he, he he is a white. He's being used as a white knight by this woman. She keeps. Um, I'm not going to do too much analysis on this right now because I feel like I've done it in a previous video. She is turning this guy into a white knight uh, using violence by proxy. She wants the camera guy to get the shit kicked out of him some more and to have consequences for how she feels. Uh, and she's trying to use these two guys um, as as agents of violence against the camera guy. Um, she keeps pretending that she's in danger, yet she has every opportunity to leave, and yet she will not leave. Matter of fact, she refuses to leave when she is being told to leave by the guy who she is accusing of raping her. Why did you come into my room like this? Kiss out the window. Why did you come into my room and the three of you threaten me like this? Why did you come in here and threaten me like this? You can see the door is clearly open right there. The light is shining on her leg. She's very close to it. She is nearly an arm's length away from the doorknob there. Um, she's got keys in her hand. She might have a cell phone. Doesn't matter because uh, this one guy checks the time on his cell phone. You'll see here in just a minute. Uh, now the camera guy is asking her why she came into his room and threatened him and is being violent toward him. And he keeps asking this and he's using logic, okay? And reasoning. Well, she doesn't want to deal with that. She wants him to to be penalized, and she is trying to impose um, uh, undesirable circumstances upon him, the cameraman, and all that. So what she does is she just really, really ramps up the emotion and really exploits. She's trying to. What she's trying to do is she's trying to use her irrationality and her excessive emotion 
to motivate this these guys to basically put the cameraman into the hospital because she, for some reason, is pissed off at him. And this this is this type of behavior is what is underneath the surface of virtually every woman in existence. Even societies such as India, for example, and I'm going to keep talking about this, they are thousands of years old, they have been a patriarchy for thousands of years, and within the past decade, during the 21st century, they have rapidly become feminized and misandric and all this other stuff. Uh, Egypt is uh, going through this right now with all their fucking false rape allegation bullshit and their toxicity and you will see this throughout the Middle East. Uh, there are many reasons why there is a military conflict in the Middle East and just one of them is about oil. One of them is about protecting the opium poppy fields in Afghanistan so that the um, well pharmaceutical industry can keep having a, a base substance to make uh, painkillers and other prescription drugs with. Uh, you know, it's resources. And um, uh, so, so that's understood. However, we are lied to. You know, we are told that, you know, we've got to defend freedom and all this other stuff. But what we're also doing is killing off the last pockets of patriarchy on this planet. Um... We're killing off the last of the patriarchic, the last of the patriarchal societies. Um, you know, the fear is that if we don't go over and kill people in the Middle East and all that, then somehow our all of our women will have to wear burqas and dress in black and and won't be able to drive anymore and they won't be able to vote and it's just gonna be it's just gonna be bad and it's just a tragedy. You know, that's how it's portrayed. All right, let's continue on with this stuff. Please get out of my room. Please get out of my room. Okay, so you can hear the camera guy is telling this woman to get out of her, uh, to get out of his room. He tells her twice. He says, please get out of my room. Please get out of my room. She says, oh my God, rape, rape. She keeps crying rape. You look at this. She is an arm's length away from the door. It is wide open. You can see the light coming through. Uh, and what she do? Even while she's pretending that she's in danger of rape, and she keeps saying that the guy's trying to rape her and all that. And the guy who she's accusing of rape is also telling her to leave the room. And she's sitting right next to an open door. And she will not leave. She just sits on the bed and cries rape even more while being told to leave. The hell me wants to rape me. I promise I won't squeal on you anymore. There is a cell phone right here. You can see the light on the guy's thumb. Um... You can see right there the light from it. He's, he just uses, it looks like he just uses a cell phone to check what time it is. Because most people do that now. They don't, they don't use a wristwatch. They carry a cell phone with them all the time and all that. And there may or might not be a clock in this room. And he, it looks like this guy in the green hat and the black shirt really just wants to see what time it is. And the point is he's got a cell phone right there in his hand. Uh, the guy in the cam, uh, The guy operating the camera tells this woman right here to call the police and she says that she doesn't have a phone. Well the guy who she will walk down the stairs with and, and stand next to has a phone and yes she can call the police but yet she pretends that she's unable to. I'll squeal on you anymore. <laughs> I'll do anything you want. <laughs> Please call the cops and get out of my room. Please call the cops and get out of my room. Oh, oh, I was trying to get out of your room. You won't let me. Yeah, that's why you were grabbing for the kid. Look, as she's banging on the door that is wide open, she is touching the door and banging on it, saying that the cameraman will not let her leave out of his room, yet he's telling her to leave out of her room. She's she's claiming that she is unable to escape while she's banging on the open door and then next she'll say that she doesn't have access to a phone and therefore cannot call the police call the cops then you call the cops then <laughs> get the cops here I don't have a phone you call you have you, a phone right in your you hand call. your boyfriend has a phone 
Your boyfriend has a phone right there. Call the cops. Are you all right? She knows that she's been found out and exposed for what she really is, but she won't leave it be. And look, she's already walked outside of his room and all that. These two guys were in there pretty much the whole time. This guy must have just walked out a minute ago. This guy was in here literally in the room literally the whole time. They saw that the cameraman or the, the accused did not rape um, this woman because all three were in the room at the same time. They all came in together. Um <clears throat> And they know it's bullshit. And this guy just really wanted to leave. You can see how you know, he was trying to pull this woman away earlier. And really, I mean, they, they probably were pissed at the guy for whatever reason originally. Uh, and they know that all this is bullshit. But because this bitch will not stop using her emotion as like a, a, a weaponized form of motivation. This woman knows how to exploit certain inherent psychological characteristics of men which is the provider protector she knows how to exploit that now these guys both know that the 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 accused the guy which is the guy with the camera they both know that he did not try to rape her or do anything because they were in the room as witnesses but because this bitch will not shut up they have no other recourse than to beat the, than to to intimidate the camera guy in the attempt to satisfy this bitch so that she will shut up, and you will see that in this video. Please call the cops. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, fucking crack it out, tears. I hate you for doing yeah. this to me. I hate you for doing this to me. That's what she said. He didn't rape her. He didn't even touch her. She touched him. She kept punching him and all that. And this guy knows that nothing happened, but watch what this guy does because that bitch wouldn't shut up. Okay. What are you doing? Keep it up. Animal. Call the police. Animal. Call the police and get out. You put your hands on I never Did touched her. I never 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 touched her. You, I opened up my door for you, and the three of you come storming in on me. You have no right to be storming in on me. Now the bitch shows back up again, Kathy Tritola. Okay, she alleged that she was in danger, that she needed to get away from the camera guy who... The, who the guy in the white shirt is now screaming at she was pretending that she was in danger she went down the stairs and uh, then she comes back up the stairs to the room in which she alleged that she was getting raped in okay you'll see the point is the significance of this video is that her actions her behavior does not match up with what she's saying she's portraying herself as a victim okay she wants this guy to get in a bunch of trouble and to get the shit kicked out of him for whatever reason uh, I don't know yet, but the point is she is making a false rape allegation. Now, how does this work? What it is is it's it's based on the presumption that the female, therefore a vagina, the womb, the cradle of life, is in danger and therefore the 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 uh, well-being of the tribe or, or you know the tribe is threatened by proxy, you know the tribe meaning the human family, you know the whole sanctity of the of the womb kind of. Uh, you know, kind of logic, that sort of thing. And what she's doing is she is using the perception that she is a that she is a vagina in danger. She is trying to exploit the provider protector instincts within these men, making them basically uh, well provoking them to become white knights and, and therefore being uh, agents of violence by proxy. And this is what women do. They do it so often. They they love. They love the drama. They they love the attention. They they love this whole fucking Rapunzel bullshit, fucking like fairy tale shit. Uh, that they are somehow valuable and worthy of protection, and that they're so important to the point that people need to die for them. And this is how sick and twisted their minds are. They are based. They are they are psychopathic. They're very selfish. They have the, the dark triad. They're very narcissistic. That's why they make so much effort to paint their faces and look all extra attractive to preserve the, the appearance of youthful innocence. Okay, and this is, not mis th this is not misogyny. This is not woman hatred. This is just simple fact. Okay, 
this is human psychology here. And Fometheus, you're a dipshit if you start firing back responses, you know, blaming me for a bunch of shit. Why don't you just accept this for what it is, which is the fact that a woman made a false rape allegation, which therefore...